after having a chat with several people who recently moved into the AK, I discovered that there are certain things most people coming to the UK don't know about as regards, you know, living in the UK on a student visa. And, you know, this is uh, for those who are coming in as a single person or those who are coming in with their wife and children with a full family. The things you need to know because they are, uh, I discovered most people coming with family are getting advice from people who are here as a single person. And they get to the UK and the reality is different. So I felt there's certain thing I need to share with you guys as regards moving into the UK and for those who recently moved to the UK some of the things I'll be talking about in this video will help you navigate through living in the UK on a tier 4 visa so if you think it's going to interest you don't go anywhere keep watching to the end hello guys for coming across the channel for the first time my name is Daniel I reside in the UK and I share videos around traveling abroad so if you're looking for a place to get first time information you're in the right place click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing great family and for my third subscribers thank you guys for being here I really do appreciate you guys so without further ado, let's get right in to the video. There are quite a few things I've shared with people on this channel and you know, over the uh, past few months, I've gotten lots of feedback from people on how much the information shared on this channel has really helped them. And I've discovered that certain people uh, probably lack of access to information, you know, keep making some of the mistakes with, you know, talked about on this channel and it's really you know heartbreaking saying that some of the mistakes these people are making you know is telling on their children and family so and it's very important that if you're coming to the UK and show you have adequate information on the city you are going to and also on the university you're going to so if you're coming to the UK as a family honestly except you've got enough cash or you've got enough money to fund your move into the UK it's not advisable for um, you to come into the UK with your family. If you're still struggling financially or you don't have enough you know, fun to you know sort out your family in the UK, come alone, get settled after a few months, then you can come into the UK with your family. It's really depressing seeing people you know struggling with accommodation. I recently came uh, met a family. Uh, I met the husband and you know he walked up to me in the city of Newcastle and it was like oh I came to the UK four days ago and we don't have a place to stay um, we'll be sleeping at a particular church in Nigerian church around this area and you know we were unable to get accommodation and I'm like why would you come into the UK with two kids and your wife without adequate plan on accommodation I recently met someone who also came into the UK and for the past two weeks he has been living in Airbnb and if you're in the UK, you know how much it is to stay in an Airbnb. Like, it's unreasonably expensive to live. So, every single money you had bought to the UK, you had spent it on Airbnb. Even to get an accommodation now, you can't afford to even pay for that accommodation because you had exhausted all the funds with him. So, I said, if you're coming to the UK, please make sure you, you know, make adequate plan. And for those coming to the UK as a family, it's very important for you to, you know, plan your... Um, the end of your program from the beginning um, i've had conversation with different people in the uk you know who have been here for over a year and their visa is going to expire soon they actually don't know what is the next line of action now the good thing is if you're coming to the uk with your family as a student your partner can work more than 20 hours that's why i advise people if you're coming with your family ensure that the most um educated person or someone who had as more experience is not the one studying. What, what do I mean? Now, if your family and the husband has got, let's say, a master's degree in, let's say, something you know worthwhile, like maybe in data science or anything, um, and you don't want to come to the UK to do another master's, it's advisable that make sure your wife is the one coming to study, while you, um, you know, start applying for jobs. Because the truth is, many of the organizations in the UK are not interested in what you study. I've gone for quite a number of interviews in the last couple of weeks and. None of them have ever asked, what are you studying? All they are interested in is in what can you offer to the organization. So make sure that the person studying, um, you know, the, the person on the dependent visa is the one that has the capacity to, you know, get a good job. So that while you're studying as a student, your partner is out there trying to get a professional job that will eventually help the family to stay back in the UK. Now, many of families are going through a lot right now because the visa is going to expire in the next two months. They don't know what to do. Are they going to go through the care visa route? You know, are they going to get the post study work visa? And every of those choices comes with its own financial constraints. Now, 
I just I just spoke to someone who um, has got three kids in the country, and you know, they, that's a family of five. To get a post study work visa, they need ten thousand pounds to get a post study work visa, and this person is probably you know uh, got less than that, probably even half of that as his savings because you've got loads of bills to pay, you've got you know a lot of upkeep to you know meet up with financial obligations in the UK and it's very difficult to save. That's the sincere truth. Those have been in the UK for the past two years, for the past one year, especially those with family now. Now I'm still gonna come back to those uh, who are single like me. Um those with family is very difficult for them to save because of the financial obligations, the bills, you know, you have to get a bigger apartment. You can come with come into the UK with two children and get and get a self con. You know, like back in Nigeria whereby we just manage. Let all of us just stay in one room. That's not uh, possible here in the UK. You need to get, you know, a certain uh, accommodation for your family size. So this person is now he's got um, about six weeks left on his visa. They don't know what to do. So if you're coming to the case of family, please have a plan from the start of the program. Draw a map. This is, all, is this all, what are we going to do? Okay, are you going to do this? Oh, the person who is dependent. What are you going to do? Are you going to take up a course? Are you going to start applying for certain jobs? Make sure you do all of this. I know it's not easy because. When you first come to the UK, your first six months, you're just, you know, you're trying to balance financially, you know, you're trying to pay up balance of your partner's tuition fee, you're trying to pay up, you know, the bills and the debts you took back home and all of those stuff. I understand it's not easy. However, at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in unnecessary pressure. Make sure you have your plans already in place. What are the things you want to try to achieve in six months? Okay, if you're going to eventually go for the postal work visa, what plan do you have in making money to be able to meet up with a financial obligation? It's really, really stressful, but the truth is you just have to do it. And, you know, for young people like us who are unmarried, um, the moment you're, or, you know, grounding off your program, the next question is, how do I get a job? Please, guys, please, guys, I understand you need to make money. I understand you need to, you know, um, sort out some bills. Please and please take up courses, take up certification, take up, you know internship pool take up you know some things to build your work experience in the uk many people are actually going through a lot right now because all they did was focus on care job and you know after their program they're not getting offers they're not even getting interview invites you know so that's why it's very important while studying please guys ensure you take up internship so that when you're done with your program you don't struggle to get a job many people are going through a lot of things you know because you need a tier 2 visa to stay back in this country and you know if you take the post study work visa that's also an avenue for you to be able to build your work experience also but if you're able to do that during your uh, you know your studies then the post study work visa is also an avenue for you to take up internship but please don't spend your post study days doing um, you know jobs that you know you can't put in your cv if you understand what i mean because do you mean to start having you know uh, academic gap are you start having um you know work experience gap in your cv is one of the things that recruiters you know don't like uh, for the few interviews i've gone in the past weeks one of the questions that was you know common to every one of them is what is your work experience gap so you, you must make sure that you know you are building a particular profession, a particular career, even if it's on paid internship, just get the work experience and the reference. So that's going to help you if you're going to get a job that will eventually, uh, you know, um, give you a tier two visa. So these are many of these realities you need to know. You know honestly, the truth is making money in the UK is it's, it's not easy. Especially if you if you're just coming to the UK, just share with us in the comment section how long it took you to get your first job in the UK. It's not easy, and when you get a job, you've got like backlogs of payments to make. So it's really not easy. But the truth is, if I'm to recommend someone traveling abroad, I will always tell you to come to the UK because UK has loads of opportunity. But you need to learn how to harness some of those opportunities. So if you have any other contrary opinion or you've got any other contribution, please state in the comment section of this video. And if you find this video is also click on the like button. If you're coming across my video for the first time, please click on the red subscribe button to join the amazing growing family. And for my turning subscribers, thank you guys for the love. Thank you for being here. I really do appreciate you guys. So this will be the end of this video and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.